YouTube and fellow Star Wars collectors! On this episode of Toys Are The Way, we will be taking a look at how I updated the leg articulation on the recent Clatoonian Raider from The Mandalorian. If you're new to the channel or a fan of Star Wars collecting, be sure to smash a like on this video, remember to subscribe, and make sure to ring that bell to stay notified. Welcome back everyone! If you recall, in my recent review of the latest Vintage Collection Wave, I had mentioned wanting to upgrade the leg articulation on the Clatoonian Raider from The Mandalorian. Here you can see that figure on the far left, and it is unfortunately plagued with swivel hips, which are just not as fun to pose as newer Vintage Collection figures, which have all the articulation you're going to need for like dynamic poses and stuff like that. So I really wanted to get to work and solve that issue, giving these figures better articulation, but also a little bit more variety to their look. Additionally, the Clatoonian Raider is basically the Weequay Skiff Guard with a different accessory and head. And since that figure is on the way as well, I wanted to be able to upgrade articulation for those kind of characters and customs that I might be adding to my dioramas. And let's just be honest, swivel hips are just not fun when you compare them to recent vintage collection figures that have ball jointed hips, rocker ankles, and the full articulation you need to create dynamic poses. I personally am starting to think that swivel hips are a little unacceptable, especially when we're seeing price increases and I just would like to see a better figure. The unfortunate part is that a lot of the older skiff guards and aliens suffer from swivel hips. I think if Hasbro were able to design an updated pelvis that could allow for ball jointed hips, they could use the lower legs of most of these figures and that would already make a world of difference. Or perhaps Hasbro could use an existing pelvis that they already have in their tooling library. And in fact, that's what I did to update a lot of these figures. But with all that being said, let's take a closer look at each one of these figures and how I accomplished giving them better legs. It's safe to say the Clatoonian Raider is an excellent offering from the Vintage Collection. The figure has some wonderful sculpting and accessories, such as the removable helmet and armor, which are perfect for customs. And now with the upgraded range of motion seen here, this figure offers a whole lot more to my collection. To begin, we will need the following, a Vintage Collection Clatoonian Raider from The Mandalorian, pliers, a disposable plastic container, hot water, and some spare Anakin Skywalkers from Attack of the Clones. I bought several of these discounted figures from Amazon listed under the used and damaged section, and as you may notice, the car backs are in pretty bad shape, but that's totally fine since we'll be using all of these for custom fodder and have no real interest in the packaging whatsoever. Start by freeing this vintage collection figure from its plastic coffin. Next, pop off the head sculpt and remove the soft goods cape. This cloak is made of a really nice material and I would suggest keeping it for customs in the future. Lastly, we will remove the helmet and head sculpt from the Clatoonian Raider as we prepare to disassemble the figure. Fill a measuring cup with one and a half to about two cups of water and heat it in the microwave for three minutes. Then pour it into a disposable plastic container. Note that you will want to use a separate container due to the plastic chemicals released when action figures are boiled. You will not want to contaminate a kitchen item that you plan to use in the future. The hot water will soften the plastic, making it malleable and allowing for easy disassembly. Using the pair of pliers and applied force, detach the legs and additional belt piece from the torso. This extra belt is from the Weequay Skiff Guard and is needed for the assembly and appearance of that figure. You can certainly save this item for customs as we will no longer need it. Next, remove the armor and bandolier accessory from the figure by sliding up over the neck and fishing the arms through. Next, take the Anakin figure and submerge it in the hot water. Depending on how fast you work, you may need to heat up some additional boiling water. Once again, use the pliers and some applied force to pop the torso from the legs and remove the soft plastic tabard. This Anakin figure dates back to 2013, when it was released in the 3.75 Black Series line, and just goes to show you that ball jointed hips were possible and should have been utilized better and for a wider variety of figures. When you compare the two sets of legs, you can see that the pelvis and peg are not far off, and Hasbro should get creative and use assets like these to kitbash and enhance figures when possible. I will always take more articulation over less when it comes to these figures. Next, we will reassemble the Mandalorian Clatoonian Raider using the Anakin legs and soft goods skirt. Re-outfit the Raider's torso with the armor and belt accessory, then submerge it in boiling water to soften the plastic peg hole. Place the soft goods skirt on the legs and simply insert the peg into the torso. This should require little to no effort as the peg fits easily and will remain secure and in place. As you can see, the figure now has ball jointed hips and this added articulation will allow the Clatoonian Raider a far wider range of motion when compared to the standard release. 
Additionally, the Anakin legs have rocker ankles, which can only provide even greater posing capabilities. Lastly, I was able to kitbash a random alien citizen using the leftover parts from both of these figures, allowing nothing to go to waste. Naturally, I wanted to see if I could set the bar higher and use a newer figure such as Cassian Andor to enhance the Clatoonian Raider. This figure sports all the modern articulation I have been enchanted with lately. While the tooling for the pelvis won't be a perfect fit, I think Hasbro could and should develop a similar piece that could be used on older figures, replacing the dated swivel hip. In order to make my modification work, I'm going to be using some Gorilla Tack to fill the space around the stem, providing a snug fit once the barbell is inserted into the torso. Additionally, this will be covered up by the soft plastic tabard from the Cassian figure, leaving the midsection looking fluid and complete. Of course, the blue plastic will need to be painted to achieve this finalized look. To do so, I will be using brown acrylic paint and opted to use the color straight from the tube rather than mixing it to match. I felt this was close enough and was not a large enough area to be worried about. The leftover Cassian head sculpt is an amazing upgrade for the Rogue One figure, so be sure not to let that go to waste. Once everything is ready, heat up the figure's midsection and insert the modified peg into the torso for a new and improved Clatoonian Raider. Once again, nothing goes to waste. I painted the spare Weequay belt, shaved off excess from the peg of the swivel leg, and inserted it into the leftover Cassian torso. I then added a spare 3D printed head from Scoundrel Stock with some tack on the neck, added the vest from the Rogue One Cassian release, painted it to match the arms, and was left with another citizen for my shelf display. While swivel legs are not ideal, they will do just fine for random backgrounders used to fill the busy streets of my dioramas. The Clatoonian Raiders showed no mercy in the opening scene of Episode 4 of The Mandalorian, and now these figures can do the same. The added articulation is a huge upgrade, and I'm very happy to have solved this issue with a very simple fix that I can share with the community. Here you can see one of my variants of the updated figure. I opted to add some variety to this version by giving the soft plastic skirt a dirty brown wash. Additionally, I added a different helmet taken from a vintage collection Return of the Jedi Klaatu from Jabba's Palace. For the last Clatoonian Raider updated with the Andor legs, I opted to use the included helmet but added a dirty brown wash to give it a different look. I did not use the included soft plastic armor and belt, but instead used my go-to for customs, a bandolier accessory from Marauders that I will leave linked in the description down below. And there you have it, my quick fix for the vintage collection Clatoonian Raider from The Mandalorian. All in all, I think this band of Marauders looks fantastic, and now that they have the proper leg articulation, I can pair them with the ATST and recreate some scenes from that memorable episode. I hope you've enjoyed this video and taking a look at my quick fix for this figure. Hopefully it will help anyone who's looking to enhance their collection of Clatoonian Raiders. Be sure to let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Did you enjoy this video and are you tired of outdated articulation? I want to hear about it. And don't forget to drop a like on this video and subscribe if you're new to the channel. It always helps and is greatly appreciated. Thanks everyone, and may the force be with you.